Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing out there? This is Nadja Wright Brown speaking uh, today on Jane Unchained News, and I have some fabulous guests on uh, the show today, so I can't wait to get started. Um, I'm hearing a little bit of background noise, so if anybody has cell phones on, things like that, if we can just mute, mute that out, mm -hmm. I'd appreciate it. And then I'll get started uh, reading uh, the bios. I could still hear it. Thank you. All right. So today we have, well, it's, let me, let me just let everybody know it is a uh, national fresh fruits uh, and vegetable month. And this is the topic of discussion today. So I am happy to um, have these two fabulous guests on the show. And we're going to talk about all that's happening for national fresh fruits and vegetable month. So let's start with the bios. Uh, today we have Tony St. Clair. She is the proud owner and CEO of True Self Total Health, uh, assisting and guiding people who have forgotten or perhaps may have never learned how to stay healthy and balanced. She keeps them vegan. She helps them uh, regain their balance by detoxifying and strengthening their bodies, overcoming negative thoughts and behaviors and reigniting their passion to set a strong foundation for a successful and satisfying life. Tony has received multiple but interrelated certifications as a live food chef, plant-based nutrition educator. She is also a certified functional nutrition coach and educator, digest digestive health coach, and insulin resistant coach. She is a sought after inspirational speaker and presenter for health and wellness conferences, online health summits, and has appeared on Good Morning Washington as an expert chef and plant-based nutrition educator. Thank you for joining us, Tony. And we're actually gonna show a clip of uh, your um, your your uh, time on Good Washington, Good Morning Washington. Okay, so let's share that. Thank you, Nasha. Lady, love her, Jennifer Lewis. All right, well, chocolate can sometimes get a bad rap, but the guilty pleasure can actually be a nutritional powerhouse, depending on the choices you make. So here to show us how to be a healthy chocoholic with a roundup of recipes is health coach Tony St. Clair. Welcome back to the show. We're happy to see you. So first of all, as a true chocoholic, come on in here. Why are we addicted to chocolate? There are two reasons. Okay. One, under stress. We're under yes. stress, we're anxious, and chocolate releases hormones okay like dopamine and serotonin those are the feel-good hormones the things that keep us coming back like okay. the, when we do uh when we have dopamine we want to keep going back and going back so the addiction is the dopamine Where do you want to start? Before I start this, if you don't mind. Okay, sure. So the first um, healthy meal or mm -hmm. healthy chocolate snack that I made was chocolate cherry super ball. Okay. Super food ball. So it's made <laughs> with um, it's made with pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds are great. Oh, okay. actually, Brazil nuts, castellanium, mm -hmm. um, dates have lots of iron and magnesium. That's easy with sugar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you also have dried cherries, perfect course cacao, mm -hmm. dark chocolate, and um, coconut. Blend all that up in a food processor, mm -hmm. and we have these lovely balls. Then, okay, and I can try one of these. You can, but you can actually roll it in any of the seeds or hemp seeds to make it more interesting so it looks like that. Oh, so, well, hold on, let's see, that's really sweet already. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. just with the dates mm -hmm. and the cherries, nothing, no added. Now, sugar. a little pumpkin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's really sweet already. I don't mm -hmm. really need anything extra, but I could do something extra. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you want to cut down the sugar a little bit or just to mm -hmm. balance it, you can put the, the roll it in the sesame seed or roll it mm -hmm. in the hemp seed or even the cacao. There's coconut. Yeah, which that's is really delicious. good. Oh, okay, God, I'm going to keep munching. All right, Come on. It's awesome. So, what you have is okay, a lot of my clients um, are alcoholics because they have these different deficiencies, mm -hmm. mostly magnesium. So, oh, I wow. made a smoothie that has kale, that has a lot of magnesium, mm -hmm. bananas, and of course, the star of the show, chocolate. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, kale chocolate smoothie. And here's your sample. looking good. And here's my sample. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna put this down. Okay, you can wash that down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. 
Yeah. I will tell you this. This is really good and rich and thick. Absolutely. It's like a very um thick piece of chocolate cake. You know, the yes. time you get at the fancy restaurants that cost you so much money, you got to have a glass of milk to wash it down. <laughs> That's, <it. laughs> That's awesome. I mean, a lot of people, they crave the decadence too and the the mouthfeel. This to me tastes like a banana milkshake with chocolate. Yes, that's exactly mm -hmm. right. And if you have kids that you want to expose them to green, there's kale in there. They won't even know it. I don't have kids, but I have Veronica Johnson. BJ, come on out here and try this. This is delicious. I'm trying to get there okay. early. So next is, oh like my goodness, this is a website yummy, have delicious pot. milkshake, dairy free. Dairy free. Dairy free. Mm -hmm. So um, see if you can taste the ingredients in it. In it. So if you can tell it's a little thicker. Because it has sunflower seed now, butter. Now, this is thicker than that. Yeah, because we have sunflower seed butter to thicken it up a little bit. Is we that have, what it is? Yep, we have almond milk. We have mm -hmm. do, do have some frozen bananas, of course, cacao, some dates, lots and lots of dates. So what's the secret ingredient? The sunflower seed butter makes it very thick. Really? Yes, and the almond milk is, you know, milk. We can use any kind of milk. But I would have I, never I guessed that. Yeah, right. Delicious. So if you have... Now, can you put banana in this one? Because I like this the texture of this one. Versus the one with the kale. I like the kale. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely. I don't even taste kale in that, really. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, you can. You can actually add more bananas if you want that more banana taste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that does have some frozen banana in it. So wow. You see. And this is a good way to, to get good, healthy, dark chocolate in your body mm -hmm. while also increasing the magnesium and the nutrients so that you can decrease your craving. Just Why is dark chocolate better than milk chocolate? Because dark chocolate has all of the... Um, flavonoids and all that in it with all of the mm -hmm. sugar. So at least 70%. That's mm. why you need the dark chocolate. And all the other chocolates have less than that, but they also have sugar and dairy and all the stuff mm -hmm. that makes you go to sleep and gain weight and not look good. Not right. look good. Mm. Not feel good. Well, let me tell you, this tastes delicious. Thank you good. so much. Where Thank do we you find so you in your recipes? Um, www.trueselftotalhealth.com. And if mm -hmm. you go to my website, even on your page, I think I'm going to have all these recipes and the reasons that dark chocolate is so good for you. Mm, man, yeah. can't say no to this. Aww. All right. Well, thank you so much thank for coming you. in. Thank you very much. All right, folks, stay with us. There's more of Good Morning Washington coming up right after the break. Look at that. <laughs> Tony, you, you got me hungry with that one. <laughs> that was so much fun to do. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like it's fun. Awesome. So, again, um, you can catch Tony here. You follow her on Twitter and Facebook. Um, and we definitely got to get into our next guest. Yes. Uh, Crystal Foreman. Uh, she's a, a master in public health um, and uh, what is that? A master in, in health administration and is the owner director of Holistic Wellness and Health. She is a passionate health and wellness educator who uses a plant-based approach to focus on disease prevention education and health and wellness outreach programs. Her whole person approach focuses on the mind, the body, and the spirit, and integrates health, fitness, and wellness uh, to improve the quality of life for all beings. She offers healthy plant-based cooking classes, wellness workshops, health coaching, gardening consultation, and meditation. Crystal also works to improve food justice, food sovereignty, and sustainable food access. In addition to her Master of Public Health and Master of Health Administration degrees, Crystal is a certified permaculture designer and a certified Baltimore City Master Gardener. Holistic wellness and health makes healthy living easy, nutritious, delicious, and fun with a focus on plant-based foods that help you with inflammation, cravings, gut health, and weight issues. Thank you for joining us today, Crystal. And we're going to show a clip of us, some of the things that you do, okay? So this has a lot of the same nutrients as our shell and collards. It's very high in vitamin A and K. And it's also high in iron. So if you want to cook it down, it's going to put it in the top down. You can put stir fry, it takes about eight minutes to cook. A 
Hope everyone's doing well with being um, inside. This weekend, I will be showing you all how to do container gardens. I know that that's something a lot of people have been asking about. And it's something that I need to do myself anyway. So while I'm doing my container gardening, I will teach you all um, some of the steps you need to do easy um, container garden gardening. All right, so we're gonna come back over um, to the Okay, did that, sh that cut off, Chris? Okay, no, all right, awesome. Oh, okay, these are your upcoming events. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Can't wait. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, you have a lot of the holistic wellness reset workshop. Yes, awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, great. Well, thank you for joining us today, Crystal, Tony. Let's get into your journey, starting with you, Tony. How did it all start? Well, it all started with vanity. Um, <laughs> I was an athlete and I wanted to um, improve my athletic performance. I was a runner and I did a lot of research and I read, oh, you eat more plant based food and um, and you'll, um, you know, you're, you'll uh, be healthier. Uh, and so I started by not eating dairy. I started removing stuff, dairy and gluten. And I found that my athletic performance just like went through the roof. I, I my asthma improved. I was hooked after that. And so I spent all my time and energy learning as much as I could about plant-based eating so that I can not only support my health generally, but my friends and family and anybody else, because I realized that was the magic bullet for me, just eating real whole plant-based food. Yeah. Awesome. Um, talk to me about... Uh what is a functional nutrition coach? What, what is that? What do you do? That's a great question. So functional nutrition, if you think about it, is, is, is nutrition that supports your unique body. It's functional for your body. So when um, plant-based eaters come to me, or even people who don't eat plant-based or need to eat more plant-based food, we're looking at where do you have imbalances in your body and how can we use food to support those imbalances instead of just you know, just just eating anything and seeing if it works. So my job as a functional nutrition coach is to support the individual bio individual person. So that's very, that's that's important. Mm -hmm. um, who is your ideal client? Ideal client? Yeah. So my ideal client wants optimum health. They're tired of tracing symptoms. They're tired of uh, Googling and getting answers that fit everybody but themselves. They're overwhelmed, but want information. So they I would say that they're um, I would say that they're over influenced with information, but starving for wisdom. That's my ideal client that wants that wisdom with that information. Awesome. Thank you yeah. for that, Tony. Mm -hmm. Crystal, let's talk about your journey. Yeah. So I um, would be what would be considered plant based um, since I was a kid. Um, I was very sensitive to the plights of animals when I found out where all of my meat and stuff came from. So I would always pick out the meat for my food. Um, my parents were very um, understanding and supportive. I went back and forth for years, for over 30 years, um, back and forth vegetarian, um, omnivore, vegetarian, omnivore. I saw a video about 30 years ago at an African-American church in Baltimore City that showed um, the animal agriculture and um, the truth of how we get our food. And that impacted me a lot. My mom and I went vegan for a little while. And then I, um, I was so tired at the time. So I kind of went back to being omnivore. Um, about 10 years ago, I decided that I was going to be this pure vegetarian, actually before that, but I never went back. So I stuck with it, never became an omnivore again. And then eight years ago, I became vegan. And part of it was just my partner and I decided together that um, it just fit with our ethics better. When we um, tried a 40 day vegan before and we felt great afterwards. And then we went back to vegetarian and I was sick for a couple of weeks. <laughs> and so I was like, that's never going to happen again. So when we did it again, we just stuck with it. It made sense. Um, I was I was cooking tofu like when I was a teenager. So I was, I was already used to different types of food. Um, I was exposed to a lot of different types of food. So for me to transition, it was definitely a transition, but um, it was easier for me to go that route and then to stay with it once it became a thing of not just my body, but became a thing of the environment and um, other beings. 
then it was like, okay, that's, it was able, I was able to stay with it. It's not an option for me to go back. Um, so I'm a vegan, I'm a plant-based vegan. Thank you for that, Crystal. Uh, so knowing all of that, how do you all respond when uh, folks say a vegan food or veggies isn't really food? You need to eat animals and the flesh to get your nutrition. How do you respond to that? Um, so for me, it's uh, so I say real food comes from um, it is like, that's what it is. Now we have foods that's processed um, things. You can consume a lot of things. You can consume paper and it's not food. And so I would say anything that benefits your body, gives you nutrition, um, makes you feel better. All of those things that are real food, um, you know, like cookies, Oreos. Some people consider that vegan. It's not really plant-based um, and definitely doesn't provide nutrition. So that to me is not real food. You can eat it. It's edible. But um, like when people say like animals, you have to have animals to have real food. Um, that's not necessary at all for humans. It's not what our digestive system is set up. We're actually set up to eat plants. So um, for humans, real food are, you know, comes from the earth. Thank you. Tony, what do you have to say about that? I absolutely agree with her. So as a functional nutrition coach, food is to nourish our bodies. And there's food and not food. The body only recognizes food and food from the earth. Everything else, it doesn't know what to do with. Um, as far as meat is, and that, that would include, you know, whole unprocessed plant-based food, which in my case, for some people can do grains, uh, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Right. And, and to various degrees, we have you know difficulty digesting some of that. But meat eaters, for the most part, um, are getting nutrition secondhand. Ah, secondhand. Talk about that. Why is it secondhand? Uh, because the nutrition. I mean, because you got to get your protein, right? Yeah, you got to get your protein. But the, 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 especially if we're talking about cows, they're, for the most part, they're herbivores. They eat, they get their nutrition from the earth not from eating other animals. And so we're getting that nutrition secondhand and, and, and through a process that is not digestible or, or fully digestible for, for us as, uh, as humans. So protein, I, can, I, I wish I could just put up a chart that tells you how many plants have more nutrition and bio-individual and bioavailable nutrition and protein than meat. Um, broccoli has a lot of protein. It's no, I love broccoli. That's I know. My, my daughter loves broccoli too. A ton of protein. I will tell you this. I find that most of my clients that are trying to transition to more plant-based, I allow them to eat a little bit of meat over time because they're getting the nutrition they need from the greens. They stop eating the meat. They, they have no desire for it anymore. So if you boost up your greens, your nutrition from the, directly from the grass or from the soil, you'll find that your cravings will go down then it's just a matter of a ritual or a habit. Yeah. Thanks, Tony. Yeah. Crystal, talk to me about sports nutrition. What, what is that now? And, and is that the same as like when you're, you're really into fitness? Cause I'm getting into really, really deep into my fitness routine. Is that the same or is it different? So sport nutrition focuses um, on the athletes, um, what some athletes need more supplements, more nutrients than um, people who are sedentary or just have like a regular lifestyle where they're just, um, you know, sitting at a computer all day. So people who are active and people who are athletes um, definitely need to, um, depend on what type of athlete. So you have endurance athletes and you have strength athletes. And so the endurance ones might need more carbs, um, uh -huh. like, like bananas and, um, you know, a lot of your fruits and starchy veggies for them to have that endurance so that their muscles can handle going longer. So you're feeding your muscles that energy. For someone who is a more into strength training, they need more protein, which you can easily get from like your beans and your whole grains and a lot of veggies, as Tony said. So um, it's just a difference of making sure you're getting enough um, of those nutrients. Now, a lot of people um, will say like, there's a lot of proof that a lot of the best athletes are vegetarian and vegan. And they are getting, you know, they have better oxygen in their blood because they're eating um, plants that have chlorophyll. The chlorophyll actually helps you um, get more oxygen into your lungs. It's, it's better increases um, oxygen absorption for your muscles. 
So you want to get eat those nice green, healthy veggies, and you want to make sure you're getting um, enough sugar as well. So, you know, you want to get that from your fruits, from your dried fruits as well. Yeah. Thank you for that, Crystal. Okay, let's talk about digestive fun dysfunctions. I'm sure you both can answer that question. How does that occur? Yeah, I'll, I'll go. So this is one of my favorite subjects to talk to people about with digestion because it's not what you put in your body, it's what your body um, digests and absorbs that gets into the cells. Most of us have, especially over a certain age, have digestive um, disorders because we're not eating real food that supports the digestive system. Um, or we eating foods that cause inflammation or non-food that cause inflammation like dairy um, and like gluten. And so uh, what I do is I like to help my clients fix the whole digestive system because digestion starts first with the mind. It's, I, you're seeing food that makes your, eye, your mouth water. Grapes make my mouth water, not raw meat or not meat. Then there's the chewing. People don't chew their foods enough. That starts digestion. There's a whole process that takes place when you chew your food. You have to have good stomach acid to break down the proteins and the um, and the minerals that comes from the fruits and vegetables. So many people that are eating meat, because I uh, I've been trained to look at blood tests to see you know how much is getting into the blood um, in the cells. Most people are eating a lot of meat and they're producing uric acid because the the, the, um, the nutrient itself is not getting into the cells. So they have a lot of protein floating in the blood, not getting into the cells. So you've got to fix that digestion. Leaky gut, another phenomenon that is occurring because people aren't eating real food. They're eating toxic food that's causing distress in the um, intestines and it causes a leaky gut, makes those junctions open up. So all kinds of stuff is going into your blood system, which causes autoimmune disease, everything from asthma to arthritis. So if you have any, any of these diseases, you gotta look to digestion and fixing that leaky gut. Um, many people have difficulty converting their nutrients to usable form because they don't have um, good um, gut flora in their lower intestine. I can go on and on and on, but you, you, you have to fix digestion no matter how good you eat, you have to fix digestion in order for the, the cells to see um, to see the nutrients and use it. Yeah, that's very important information. Thank you for that, Tony. Yeah. Crystal gardening. Let's talk about what other benefits of uh, planting your own foods. You're a master at that. Yes. Yeah. So it's very important um, to me that everyone um, has the knowledge at least to be able to grow their own food and knowing that they can grow their own food in a small space. Um, so. To get the best nutrition, you want your food to be harvested as close to when you're about to eat it. And so the easiest way to do that is to grow your own food um, and be able to take it from your garden or from your patio to your kitchen. Um, so you're getting like all of those nutrients right away. Um, the second best is definitely going to your farm, farmers, and um, getting fresh produce that way. So as soon as you harvest something, you start losing nutrients in it. And... Um, I think that gardening is one of the best ways to, to make sure you're getting the best nutrition. You know what you're putting in your soil, you know um, how you're feeding your plants. So that's very important as well. Mm -hmm. um, gardening is also great for your mental health, mm -hmm. just being outside, touching the soil, or even if you're doing gardening inside, touching the soil is beneficial for your gut health as well as when shown to um, if you breathe in the good bacteria from the soil that actually affects your um, digestive system. It also affects your mental health because of the serotonin levels. So um, like Tony was talking about the gut health, you know, that's very important for your mental health as well. So when you're gardening, you're um, getting a good bacteria, you're getting, um, you're taking your shoes off and putting your feet on the ground. You're also getting, it's called grounding, you're getting um, beneficial ion exchange with the earth. And so I'm definitely for people just going out, even if you don't garden, touch a tree, you know, just get outside and touch and be in nature. But gardening is best for like the best nutrition. You know what you're putting in your food um, like as you're growing it. And you don't have to worry about pesticides and all types of other chemicals. Um, but if you can't do that or you don't want to do that, um, you feel like you have a black thumb um, or brown thumb, then you can definitely um, support your local farmers. Thank you for that, Crystal. Plant-based versus vegan food. So plant whole food, plant-based versus vegan food, healthy versus unhealthy. What are some um, what is some advice that you can give to us? Now, I, I do some processed food, you know, the mock meats and things like that. I try don't I try not to do it in abundance, but let's talk about that. What do you what do you what do you what are your thoughts on it? Go for it, Crystal. 
Okay, so um, like a lot of food that has a like soy protein isolate or um, wheat gluten, it's very isolated. It's not a whole food. And so you're only getting some of the nutrients. And a lot of times your body actually doesn't recognize that as real food. And so like, I love um, vegan soy ice cream. There's a particular brand. Me and, too. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's, I also get inflammation after I eat it. And at first it's like, oh, oh. But wow. it is, um, it's the soy protein isolate. My body's like, that's not real. <laughs> so so it, it gets, I get inflamed. And so then I get the meat gets going on. Same thing like when I used to consume milk. So I was like, what's going on with this vegan ice cream? <laughs> but it, it's, the, it's the protein, you know, the isolate. So even though it's great, like for some people when they're working out real hard, it helps them build up muscle, but it's still, it can be hard on your digestive system. And so, um, same thing with wheat gluten. I mean, you're taking a particular protein out of your whole grain. So whole grain is better. That's whole food. But when you take out a particular part, like the, the starch from the wheat or the whatever it is, it's no longer really a whole food. It's still plant-based. It's still, you know, vegan, but it's not necessarily the best and optimal. So I love, like, people who... Um, like during this time of year, I like to have more raw food and more high, what I call high vibrational foods. So oh, food yeah. Really yeah. has all of the enzymes in it, has all of the life still in it. Um, yeah, so I don't want to talk too much on that, Tony. No, you no, that's, I, I, I really want to piggyback off that. So when clients come to me who say they are plant based eaters, they're usually junk food vegetarians. They're eating everything processed, and their blood test shows it. So, because there's nothing there, it's been denatured. It may have started out as a natural product. They stripped it to stabilize it. And here's the real crime: even if you're not getting nutrition, they're putting heavy metals in it and stabilizers oh, wow. that cause all kinds of havoc in the body. All kinds of havoc in the body. So, good, better, best. Best is always like Crystal said: grow your own. It's fresh. You know what you're getting, right? A little process is okay, but you want to keep that pH balance, alkaline. You can't have an alkaline pH balance with processed food. It's acidic. Yeah. And that's where disease lives and grows. Thank you for that, Tony mm -hmm. and Crystal. Awesome. Um, we're nearing the, uh, the the 30 minute mark. And I just wanted to give a shout out to uh, the sponsors here. Mm -hmm. A shout out to Jane and Chain News for allowing us this platform to have this very important discussion, uh, along with a welfare world, a veg fund and women funders and animal rights. We're going to be getting into what what this conversation is all about and why we're talking about this, because, again, June is national fresh fruit and vegetable month. And we do have a campaign going on um, that's starting June 6th. It's going to be a 10 day plant-based made easy challenge. So Tony and Crystal are member board members of the Black Vegetarian Society of Maryland, which is um, I'm an executive director of, and this is the stuff that we do. So starting this month, uh, we're going to have this channel challenge. I want to know how does what you two tie it, what you two do tie into what Black Vegetarian Society of Maryland is all about and understand Black doesn't mean it's only open to blacks. We are catering to our demographic of black, brown, Latino, multicultural, because we have the highest health disparities when it comes to the diseases, heart disease, obesity, cancer, stroke, uh, and cardiovascular disease. So please, how does your work time in, tie into what we're doing at the Black Vegetarian Society of Maryland? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in there. I'm all about self-reliance for black, black and brown people, because even if you have access to a disease management system, because it's not healthcare, we are treated disparately. We're not taken seriously. And so the more information, that's why I love education. The more information that you have about what your body's trying to tell you, the more you can take care of yourself. So that's where functional nutrition comes into play. That's where I like to educate. So if you're you're having ridges in your nails and uh, maybe your, your, your skin is just cold a little bit, let's look at the B vitamins. So I like to educate so that people can feel that even if they can't rely on the healthcare system, which is a disease management system, they can rely on themselves with good, solid education, information, and that coupled with their own wisdom. A lot of our people are, are not are afraid to go to to um, to hospitals and doctors because of the history of how they have treated us as a science project. And so I don't want that to separate people from good health. So I'm all about 
education, information, and practical tips and tools that you can use to keep yourself healthy. Hospitals are good for disease management, nothing better than Western medicine for that, but you are responsible for your own health management. You live in your body every day and all you need is information to support how to support your body to be healthy. Yeah. Thank you, Tony. Crystal? Yeah, so um, one of our main functions is education, teaching people how to grow their food, how to preserve food and how to um, cook it in a healthy manner. And so um, that's one of my functions um, as a board member is making sure that I'm reaching out to the community so they have the knowledge. But also um, I like to focus on food sovereignty, making sure that our communities know that they can be self-sufficient and that they can grow their own food and that they can be um, have some control over um, what nutrients come into their areas. I know that some communities, they have supermarkets and they have little supermarkets that don't carry the best produce. And so it's definitely important to me that we find ways to support our black farmers, to support um, farmers in general, but definitely um, our black and brown ones because they are disenfranchised when it comes to um, the funding that they do not receive from the government. So just making sure that we're supporting each other, making sure that the knowledge is out there that we know where we can go to get healthy food, where we can go to get the education. Because sometimes we give people healthy food and they don't know what to do with it. And so a lot of this function, even for this 10 day program, um, I've been asked a lot from people like, can I do videos for their organizations? Because people are getting this food and they don't know what to do with it. Absolutely. And so my, my function in life is to teach people how to live a healthy life, how to live a healthy, vibrant life. and um, and how to do it in a fun and accessible way. It doesn't have to be difficult. It does not have to be expensive. I live on a budget and I've been vegan for over eight years and I can do it and I do it well. So I teach other people how to do it well as well. It doesn't have to be complicated. Thank you, Crystal. We have a question coming in. Um, Tashi is asking, when I make wheat gluten burgers, I use a lot of plants. Uh, I liquefy quinoa, onions, peppers, and herbs as the base. Is that better than just plain gluten or gluten in store brought foods? Yeah, so um, I would definitely say like, when you're making your own burgers, definitely adding all of those good extra like veggies and um, quinoa has a lot of protein in it. So um, as long as you can get a nice formation of, for your burger and you like your texture, you're good. I think wheat gluten is good for people who are transitioning um, because it still gives them that meaty texture. So if someone really likes meat, that's a good transition. And for people who are like um, so there are some people who are like don't want anything even almost tastes like meat. So, but they still want their burger. Um, and so for them, they might not need to use wheat gluten. Beans help hold um, that shape really well. You can also use other types of natural binders to make sure it doesn't fall apart. Thank you, Tashi. Um, yeah, so you can definitely um, use other, I would say even like um, if you're going to use wheat gluten, instead of wheat gluten, you can use a whole grain flour to form your patty. So instead of having that just strict protein from that wheat, just having the whole ground up flour to help hold and mold your burgers and so get a lot of nutrition. And, see, and my, my perspective is, um, how is that feeling in your body? Because a lot of people cannot do the gluten and you have to be honest with yourself. If your digestion uh, is impaired, like if you get a big old belly immediately after you eat it, Everything that's good to you ain't good for you. So we have right. to do <laughs> Right, exactly. Everything ain't for everybody, okay? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everything ain't for every, everybody's body. <laughs> that's, that's why I like to teach personalization. So if your neighbor can eat that and they're like, wow, and they're thriving on that and you're not, it's not that it's bad. It's just not good for you. And I love Crystal's approach to that, which is it's better than, you know, it's good, better, best. But be honest, there are other plant-based foods that you can use to support that that burger craving that you like without having to um, put more, wreak more havoc on your digestive system. Thank you for that. I'm a bean lover. I love beans, but I know when I have black beans and can eat certain beans, my whole midsection is, I'm like, you know what? I can't do that again. You know, <laughs> the garbanzo beans are okay, but 
I just, you know, it's it's a very uncomfortable fe feeling. So I don't know if I need to be drinking more water or what. What do you what do you say to those people that have those issues with beans, knowing that beans are really good? They have the protein and, and a lot of nutrients in them. What 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 should I be doing? Do I need to drink more water when I consume beans? But there, go ahead, Chris, you go. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> oh, so soaking is very important if you're using dry beans. Um, yeah, we do that. <laughs> and um, put baking soda in it when they're soaking it to help kind of take away some of the, the gassiness. The yeah, that's what, that's what it is, Crystal. That's yeah. what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and, I don't um, like it. <laughs> yeah, and that, and then soaking, like after the soaking, the baking soda, rinsing it again, um, the rinsing it well. That usually, like when you rinse it when all the bubbles are gone, that tends to help. And so I think that dry beans and fresh beans can do better on people's digestive system than canned beans. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't do the yeah. canned beans. It's always dry beans, and, and and you know, I just know I can't do a lot of it. So okay, so that's yeah, definitely good drinking water, drinking um, and and making sure you're getting veggies with it because okay, you need to have that. Extra Usually beans and rice, and I got to still yeah, use so more more <laughs> leafy green veggies or yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that okay. it can digest better in your system. But that's the Latino in me, the beans and rice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to bust your bubble here. So um, carbs and protein don't normally play nicely together, particularly if you're doing a 50-50. Ah, so got that, it. that is part of the problem. Also, there's a trick that I, I taught um, some of my clients is to put um, sea vegetables like um, kombucha in the water. Oh, okay, yeah, it yeah. It breaks down that indigestible drink, part. Drink, okay, of the, of got the, it. Yeah, so. Yeah, um, I could do some more uh, kombucha. Awesome. Good, good, another good. Another trick that I that I tell my clients is that you want to eat something raw or live because that enzymes with each meal. So start that with either some kimchi or a salad and it'll help um, digest uh, a lot of that. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, let's talk about the challenge. What are we what are we doing? So we have this challenge uh, sponsored by Black Vegetarian Society of Maryland june 6th to the 16th so and then you know we'll, we'll we'll come back and talk about keep it fresh day on june 14th so that's another topic of discussion uh but the challenge the 10 day challenge and if you see the scrolling ticker there everyone um definitely download the veg starter guide by the fabulous tracy mcquirter by any greens necessary mm -hmm. african AmericanVeganStarterGuide.com. Make sure you're subscribing to NajaSpeaks.com so you can, you know, see all these great videos and other videos that I have on my YouTube channel. And register for the 10-day plant-based challenge this June, which just started. Bit.ly forward slash plant-based easy. It is free. We are paying for this for you to join. We have close to 200 registrants and we can take on more. Crystal, yeah. what are we doing? What's the plan? So, yes. Yeah, so we're kicking off on June 6th at um, 6 p.m. We're going to have a kind of like a workshop webinar, field presentation just to get us started, that y'all know what's going on for the whole 10 days. And just um, we'll be giving out prizes for that webinar as well as um, throughout the 10 days. So make sure you're, you know, definitely engaged and you're making comments and you're sharing this event with other people. So that's the, the first day, just making sure you have your materials, one more push to get your friends and family to register. And then um, every day in the Facebook group, we will have some um, tips given as well as um, sharing some videos. The guide that you'll receive when you sign up includes lots of recipes and we'll have videos to go along with those recipes. So um, that's like when you first sign up, we do get the resources right away. And then inside of the Facebook group, we will provide a lot more um, support and resources as well. It's a fun, engaging um, challenge. And definitely you want to attend the kickoff because we're going to give away some great stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, throughout, we'll be having, um, well, I know we're going to talk about the Keep Fresh, but we have different events going out. And then we'll have a kickoff or um, a wrap-up event as well, which is going to be a lot of fun. So it's going to be a lot of fun throughout the um, 10 days, but you definitely want to show up for the um, the kickoff if you can. And a lot of it, it will be recorded so you can be, um, get it live or um, as a replay. What is the value of this program, this 10 day program? You mean the cost? Yeah, yeah. like what are you, what are these all, so what are people getting for free? <laughs> yeah, so um, a lot of programs, like a 10 day program, um, especially when getting group coaching, can easily um, be 297 basically $300 on up. And so you're getting a lot of um, resources. You're getting the guide and recipes. You're getting videos, which a lot of challenges do not have. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you're getting access to a qualified um, public health educator. So you're getting a lot of um, value in that if for, for a group coaching program. If you were to look right now, a lot of them, especially for seven to 10 days, start at $300. So this is definitely a great value for you all as health coaches, both Tony and I, like for people who are our private clients, it costs more. So it is definitely <laughs> this is a great way to get in the door to learn, um, you know, how to do plant-based easy. You can ask questions. So you can ask questions going to webinars. You can ask questions in the Facebook group. I'll be very active in the group um, throughout the challenge. I'm always active anyway, but it'll be very active. So um, this is a great value um, for people who say they can't afford to do these types of programs. This is a great time to get in to get the experience. Um, not just that we are sponsoring this for you all to be able to have this access, have this information. Um, it is National Fruit and Vegetables Month. So this is a great time in the summer. So like a lot of fresh produce is out there. This is a great time um, to you know start taking care of yourself if you haven't been or get more support. Learn new recipes if you're already vegetarian or vegan. This is a great time to learn um, new techniques. Learn, I'm always learning as well. So it's just a great resource and um you don't have to pay for it <laughs> so it's, I think that that's the most important thing the, 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 you don't got to pay for the course maybe getting some things like some cooking stuff but you know you don't yeah. have to pay for the course which is a fabulous yeah. tony what do we have you doing oh yeah so my favorite thing in the world is to educate and train so that people can uh, be self-reliant those fruits and vegetables in your body in a way that matters and that counts for your health. So I am um, offering a class called um, Food is Medicine because it truly is eating right for you. And in this class, I'm going to talk about some of the symptoms that people experience when they're not eating right bio individually. But more important than that, I'm going to give you a guide, an assessment, a self-assessment that you can do before you even come to the class to see where you might be having some deficiencies. And we'll talk about how they occur and the foods, the fresh foods and vegetables that you can eat um, to correct those um, deficiencies. So it gives you it gives you a chance to be your own health and wellness expert because you live in your body every day, every day. And so this gives you information. Um, and I'm super excited to provide that because it is, it, it is truly life-changing and practical information that you can walk away with and um, eat right for you. You can upgrade your plate, right? Based on what your body needs, not what um, looks right. And also teaching you body intuition and, and wisdom so that when you- I like that. Yeah, and that's what it's really all about. I, I don't live in your body, but I can give you information to help you tap into that intuition, right? So if you're craving a certain food, um, there's a reason for that. And people are often surprised, oh, it has that. I didn't know that. I've been craving that for days. Yeah. Answer that. So when is the class? Food is medicine. Is that June 27th? Yes, yeah, June 27th. How do, how do, do we have a registration page for that yet? We have, um, yes, we have information that we uh, we may not have it on the web on the website yet, but we do have um, all the information to um, have it probably by Friday that'll be on our website. Okay. Yep, I'm gonna um, just tell everybody about the class, and then I will show the um, website um, for uh, Black uh, Veg. It's bbsmd.org. So give me one second. Um, so you can all go to bbsmd.org. We have some blogs that, you know, if you can't find <laughs> or you can't get on the plant-based easy, it is on our blog page. You can register that way. And then, you know, we have some other stuff on the site. As a matter of fact, if you opt in, you actually get a uh, salad recipe book, book. So you get that for free and you don't even have to be in the challenge. So please check out bbsmd.org for that information and, and any other uh, upcoming events and other blogs and information that we have on the site. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, we uh, we are nearing uh, 15 minutes before uh, the show ends. Uh, again, I want to shout out Jane and Chain News for allowing us this platform to have this discussion, uh, Veg Fund, A Well-Fed World, and um, Woman Funders in Animal Rights. We definitely appreciate your support. Um, so, Tony, how to become and stay a healthy vegan or vegetarian based on your unique, unique bio individual chemistry. You talked a lot. You talked a little bit about that, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And why, why that's important in optimizing your unique immune system with plant-based food. What yeah. is your take on what's going on uh, with, with the COVID-19 oh. and what's happening with our community and how it's impacting us greater than most other communities. Thank you for asking. Uh, it's impacting us simply because we are not healthy. 
because we don't eat real food and we have pre-existing conditions and autoimmune conditions and we don't have a good immune system. So it's going to attack us more or, or in greater disparity. The COVID-19, just like any other pathogen out there, can only survive in an environment that is um, going to allow it to survive. And so I created the, a book, um, you know, basically how to, an e-guide to help people know and understand what foods they can put in their bodies to support a strong immune system. So it's not just vitamin C and vitamin E and vitamin Z and zinc. There's a whole host of nutritional imbalances that have to happen in order for your body to um, fight off this virus. So you have to have whole body um, balance, not just, let me take vitamin C. Right. You have to have like vitamin C, vitamin D, but these are all things that help support other parts of your body that help to fight off the virus. So if you don't have um, good, a strong, um, a good strong liver, or you don't have good, strong di uh, digestion, you're not going to absorb that food. So I'm, I'm very much in favor of doing an assessment first. And that's what my e-guide does. You do a self-assessment. What are those nutrients that you are missing in your diet that supports overall immune health? And start putting that stuff in your body a lot. Support you. And I, I, I'm a big uh, proponent of whole food. But if you're below therapeutic, I believe in whole food-based um, nutrients, uh, supplements, if necessary. To get yeah, I, I take some. Yes, but yeah, I take them whole, whole food base. But yeah, it's, it's because we don't eat real food. We're eating food like substances that are not only not giving us nutrition, but are breaking down our bodies. So food is either building you up or breaking down. No middle ground. Got to eat real food. I'm going to let my friend. And, 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 some, and some folks think it's a problem because you have to take some sus, uh, supplements when you're vegan, like B12. It, there's people that have to take supplements when they're eating meat. So yeah. I don't know what the issue is. Yeah, um, so I'll tap off of that. Like people take not only supplements when they're eating meat, but a lot of times medicine and statins and all types of other right. things. So, right. you know, um, so prevention is definitely best. And if you have to take a few supplements to help your body out, um, hey, that's what you need to do. Um, and there are ways to get B12 and other foods um, and some other um like mushrooms is a great way to get it. Mm -hmm. So there's ways like for people who really like are anti supplements. There are ways to get your um, iodine from seaweed, and so there are ways um, for those who are like totally against it. But supplementation is definitely a good idea for pretty much everyone. Um, and I agree with the whole food part. I'm um, just to go back to the COVID. Um, and food is definitely like a lot of our people. The nutrition is important, but so is mindset and stress. We are a stressed people. Yes, <laughs> we um, are. And we need to work on, you know, mindfulness and meditation and being in tune with our mental health as well as our physical health. Mm -hmm. And so when, because even when you're eating well, that helps you with stress. Most definitely. B12 is very important for your stress levels and it's important for your immune system. It's important for your um, nervous system. But, and when you're really stressed, your body uses up a lot of B12. Yes. So, can, you know, kind of find ways, and especially with everything that's going on, virus and, and this, this stressful <laughs> being in, you know, being um, in, in our environment. And so I do have a free um, stress guide that is focused on COVID right now, like just like dealing with the mindset and taking self-care and self-love and all of that. And it's a free guide on my website. Um, like right on the front page. So if you um, are interested in like healthy eating as well as just that mindset and that, you know, minimizing that stress as much as you can, because mm -hmm. um, we do have some control over that. And so, you know, just making sure I have those resources for you all so you can definitely download that as well. Absolutely. And, and I'm going to explain this, but I, I think we're gonna, I'm going to teach a class. I taught it for my clients um, on, on how to keep the immune system pumping. And I'll offer that to Black Veg. We're going to do that. Um, probably I'm going to offer it in July. Oh, and, awesome. And, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. So because I think it's important for you to, to understand what your body is missing in the way of nutrition. And of course, it will address stress and, you know, we'll, we'll plug into um, Crystal's amazing book, too. Um, but I think it really is about self-assessment, knowing what's missing in your body and and stuffing your body with those nutrients. Um, when you when you are stressed, obviously your adrenals go 
wacky and that's oh yeah where, that's where you're going, i've been going through it for two months exactly <laughs> the old schooling and the virtual schooling and the business and it's projects and oh, yeah yeah it's, exactly it's, it's, a lot. it's a lot so we could we burn out our adrenals um, and uh, we, we, then your body needs a ton of B vitamins and vitamin C. So the normal vitamin C that you would I'm take is a blood builder right now. <laughs> what, what Mega foods blood builder. <laughs> oh, yeah, <I'm> you. <laughs> Girl, you get yeah, stress. I love that Crystal introduced that because that is the one piece that we don't talk about as a community. And that's how our nutrients get stripped. Yeah. Or, it's a or, silent killer. Stress is a is. silent killer. Yeah. And I know I have my regimens that I must do or I'm going to go crazy. And you you both know me and anybody that knows me and, and knows how I work. Yes, I have to have my yoga, my workout, my supplements, my, you know, calming music, all of that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm meditating yeah. every day, midday. So... <laughs> And we have a um, survey that, uh, you know, this is a long survey, but if you go on, if you go on the Black Veg Facebook page, and we'll be putting it on the website, uh, we, we, we have a survey out that we just want, it looks crazy like that, y'all. So we just go to the Black <laughs> Veg, and you can go to um, um, uh, the Land of Kush page too. Just, there's a survey there. I just posted it in the chat. If people can take that survey, because we want to know uh what we need to be offering you to make your experience better okay so please take 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 that survey so we can uh design the optimal programming for you okay um wh who else wants to go next with uh a response was that you crystal oh and tashi i see i see your response there michelle's gonna be on the show thursday i got y'all okay yes michelle the, the, the yogi diva Yes, Baltimore's community yogi instructor. She's going to be on here, okay? So I got her. <laughs> um, I, I will. I, I know we talk about nutrients and foods and all that and to support good health. I'm, the, the major nutrient that I find when my clients come to me, and yes, it does show up in the blood test, dehydration. We're not drinking enough water. We're I know. That's me. <laughs> I need to drink more water. It's so important. I mean, if you have a headache, drink mm -hmm. water first. Uh, if you, there you go, Crystal. Uh, I got my water bottle. Here. That, that, I'm supposed to be drinking a hundred ounces. I don't know if I'm going to make it every day. Like, I, I, is that okay? Let's talk about the water thing because yeah. I'm told that I have to drink a hundred ounces, and I, I, I just feel like a. Um, I haven't done it yet. I just feel like a bubble or something, like, uh, or just like a. You know how your ear feels with all this water? In it? I just it feels mm. uncomfortable. What do well, we do? Water hydration is just is as, as uh, personal as food that you eat. So the rule of thumb is half your body weight in ounces. That goes half up, the body weight. Right. It goes up. I'm 157 down. pounds trying to get back to 145. So I got to okay. drink half of that. Half your, generally speaking, if you work out, then you, you need more than that. Right. Because you're losing. I do work out. Right. So um, also a good sign is what color is your urine? Right. Yes. If, yes. I look at that, too. If it's the color of wheat, you're good. If it's clear, that means that the cells aren't really getting it. It's too much water. It's coming straight through. So generally what I've found based on my training, about 24 ounces of water is about all the cells can get in at, at one time anyway, maybe 32. OK, That's in my experience. So good. I, I got to work on my water. I already know. Yeah. Yeah, and also good. eating foods that are rich in water. So like this time of year is a great time to eat watermelon and cucumbers and you know, like foods that's very high. So sometimes I don't feel like I need to drink a lot of water when I'm eating a lot of like food that's heavy in a lot of water. Exactly. That's, 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 get it. that's a good point too. If you're eating a lot of processed food um, or dry food or ah. even as a raw food chef, I was making a lot of dehydrated foods. You got to drink water to hydrate them again, right? To make them usable. So it's bio-individual. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we use that bio individual. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Again, um, shout out to Jane Unchained News, the Welfare World, mm -hmm. Veg Fund, uh, Women Funders and a Animal Rights. Please subscribe to NajaSpeaks.com. That is my YouTube channel. You can catch this replay on there and all the other ones that you've missed. Mm -hmm. I think this is the 10th uh, live broadcast that I've done. Uh, download the fabulous Tracy McWhirter's uh, African American Vegan Started Guide.com. She will be on the show uh, in the in Matter of fact, this Saturday she's going to be talking about her movement, uh, making ten black, uh, ten thousand black women go vegan. So we will have her on the show uh, this Saturday, the sixth, um, and register for the ten day free 
plant-based easy challenge. That's bit.ly forward slash plant-based easy. It can't get any easier than that. It's free for you to register. You know, I guess anything you have to spend is going to be on food, making food or something like that. But to register, it is free. Please, please, please register for the program. Oh, someone has a question. Any recommendations for plant-based protein? Thank you, Jacqueline. Any recommendations? Yeah, she's saying she doesn't like tofu or wheat protein. Um, so really your plants have a lot of protein in it. You can get, like what Tony was saying earlier, broccoli, kale, collards. So all of our brassicas have a decent amount of protein in it. Mm -hmm. Fruits don't have quite as much protein as vegetables. So if you're needing, like if you need to feel that, have that full feeling that protein can provide, that's a great way to... Um, get your proteins from the greens. Pro, uh, you can also get it from your whole grains. So whole grains, nuts, I love to get my protein from almonds and um, walnuts, cashews. So those are like some of the best ways and you can cook with that. Like I love to make stir fries with cashews. So you can um, find other things to put in your food um, to get that protein um, without using tofu and without using um, processed. I, I agree wholeheartedly. So I, I'm going to say this, uh, when, you know, when I see clients and I look at their blood tests, they are not protein deficient. They are nutrient, other nutrient deficient. So while we're focusing on right. the Who protein, died of protein that we Did don't you know somebody really that died of protein anyway. Okay. <laughs> no, go for it. No, but I have many people that have come in with magnesium deficiencies, with zinc deficiencies. Me, I had to get training. one. Yep, I had to. I, my my potassium was low. My 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 magnesium because the stress levels were high. I see a holistic doctor and a um uh, a physician. The holistic doctor said, "Okay, you got to do something about this. Pro uh, the potassium's low, the magnesium's low, exactly. and you stress, and you need this. Yeah, stress is a silent killer." Oh, it is. It is. It is. Um, so this 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 obsession with protein drives me nuts because again we don't you don't need as much as you think. Now protein, um, it's it's again bio individual. So if you're athletic, and I use this app called Chronometer, you just put in your weight, your age, and whatever you do, and it'll tell you how much protein you need a day. Most people are surprised they don't need as much. You know, if you're doing like 120 grams a day and you're not working out and all that, that's too much. Your kidneys can't take that. It's acid. It's acidic to the body. It, it ruins the kidneys. Meanwhile, you're not eating any vegetables because somebody told you that you need protein, right? But you don't need nutrients. You don't need other nutrients. Please, please, please educate. Just listen to get, get good, reliable information from us um, about protein and the sources and don't overdo it. Eat Thank you. The amount that's right for your body. Thank you, Tony. Jacqueline, mm -hmm. we posted the, the challenge uh, in the, um, the the groups, all the, the groups we're streaming at, uh, which is Black Veg Society of Maryland, Vegan Soul Fest, Land of Kush, uh, my page, and Jane and Chain News. So the links are there. Let us know if you need anything else. Mm -hmm. um, there are, Jacqueline, I'll get to you privately about that. We'll, we'll post the, the directory uh, of that information. We'll probably have that also on our website site as well. So plant-based doctors, integrative, uh, people that practice both at the same time. Um, I don't know if there's any that you, you recommend right right now, but we'll put a list out. I do. I actually recommend um, Capital Integrative Health. I'm actually a health coach for them. Okay. Capital mm -hmm. Integrative Health. And Beth and Bethesda. And I'm, I actually function as a health coach for them. Mm -hmm. Okay, there they we are go. integrative. Okay, and then, we file, make sure, let me put up Tony's and, and Crystal's information again so you can connect with them. We have Tony right here. She's on Twitter, Tony TSTH, Facebook, Tony TSTH, and her Instagram is Tony Wellness Coach. Mm -hmm. So, this is all, these are all comments in um, the Facebook pages. And then for uh, Crystal, we have. Chris, we have a long one, holisticwellnessandhealth.com, also on Facebook, uh, Instagram. Everything is in the comments. We're down to our last minute. <laughs> Any quick last words? Join the challenge. Join the challenge. Free, it's easy. You win it's fun. Fun. Join you the challenge. Challenge. It's a free challenge. Uh, thank you for all the viewers. 
Thank you. We appreciate your support. Please um, join the challenge. Follow Nadja uh, Speaks.com. Um, what else? Thank you, Jane and Chain, Welfare World, Veg Fund, and Animal uh, Women Funders and Animal Rights. Please take that survey that's also in the comments. We want to make sure that we're bringing you the uh, content that you need, the classes you need, workshops, anything that you need. We want to use that survey to enhance our programming. We appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, again, look forward to the, the next programs that I'll be posting. We're going to have Michelle on. We're going to have um, uh, Tracy on. So please, nodjaspeaks.com, and you'll get all that information. Thank you again. Enjoy the rest of your day. Please be well and safe and stay healthy. Bye. <laughs>